this quick section on contributing to open source documentation. And thanks for the conference for inviting me. It's very nice to be here, very nice to meet all of you. Uh, why am I talking about this? Why am I talking about documentation? I work in open source full time. And uh, I'm an open source maintainer who writes a lot of documentation. So I've been working with documentation for the past couple of years, so I thought I will share what I learned and probably help you become documentation contributors as well. If you want to find me online, you can find me on Twitter. I'm mostly active there, or you can reach out to me. I'm on the Telegram groups as well. Uh, I work on Apache API Sense, which is an open source project hosted by the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, it is basically a high performance cloud native API gateway. Uh, it does stuff like load balancing, canary release, uh, circuit, break, circuit breaking, obs observability, authentication, the whole lot of stuff that, that is capable of an API gateway. Uh, to learn more about my work, you can visit api6.apache.org. Alright, now back to our topic. Let's start by looking at some of these myths that surround documentation. Right? Uh, for example, Documentation is not important as code. As software engineers, we often think like this. We care about writing code, we care about optimizing our code, we care about refactoring. We care a lot of lot about the code we write, but we don't often care about documentation that comes with the code. So that is something that is inherent in us. We always feel this way and it is a universal problem. Most of the developers around the world have the same problem. They think documentation is not that important. But in fact, this is a myth. Documentation is very important. It is. It can be sometimes more important than code because people won't be able to use uh, your code if they don't understand how to use that code, right? And in context of open source, when people talk about contributing to open source, they often talk about contributing code. So let's say if you take Ubuntu, unless you are contributing code to Ubuntu, fixing bugs, adding new features, people think that those contributions are not valuable. But this is this in fact is a myth. Non-code contributions like contributing to documentation, managing the community, all sort of all, all of those non-code contributions are quite valuable and they are, they are quite impactful in the open source project as well. And finally, like even if you come through all this and if you, even if you start uh, taking documentation seriously, people often think writing documentation is very easy. But uh, in fact, it is not at all easy. You have to be a good engineer, you have to be a good programmer to be to be able to write good documentation. So you are not trading your coding skills and becoming a technical writer. You are becoming a programmer who writes documentation. So there is no trade-off there. You don't have to forego your engineering career and become a technical writer. You can do that hand in hand. So let's look at how you can contribute to documentation, now that we understand that contributing to documentation is important. The first step is to be a user. So let's take an example of Ubuntu or Apache API 6. In order to contribute to the project, you have to first use the product. So for example, when you use Ubuntu, you might find issues or you might see a lack of features. So as a user, you will be able to find uh, a lot of these which can turn into contributions in the future. So the first step is to be a user, test the project, or maybe you can sign up for, sign up as a beta tester, you can test the alpha releases, you can do a lot as a user. And once you have used the product, once you, once you have tested it out and you decide, decide you want to contribute to the project, the next step is to read the contributor guide. So most open source projects, at least most popular open source projects, have very good contributor guides. Basically these are documentation that walks you through how you can contribute to an open source project effectively. So this might include how to build the project, 
what kind of tools the project use, uh, what is the process, what is the process of creating a pull request to the uh, open source project. So the contributor guide basically contains all of these information. So once you decide to contribute, you can check out the contributor guide and yeah, and see how 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 all of this works. And the third step is to learn the tools. So most popularly, uh, documentation is written by engineers using Markdown. So Markdown is a format that lets you write documents. And learning the basics of how you can use these tools, like Markdown, Git, uh, platforms like GitHub or GitLab that host, that host these documentation websites is also useful. So if you are unfamiliar with all of these, uh, maybe you are not uh, an engineer, maybe you are uh, someone who is interested in things technically but never had the chance to learn all of, all of these. Uh, the third step is to learn all of these before you start contributing. And uh, in step four, you have to look for issues. So when you are a tester, you might find a lot of issues. Uh, with the project. So for example, in API 6 you might find a uh, bug, uh, bug when you are running API 6 in a very specific environment that you might have only encountered. So you can open these as issues in the project. But if you don't have any, uh, if you have not identified any issues, you can look for existing issues within the project or you can look for uh, issues uh, in the documentation. So for example, so when you are testing out the project, you will go through the documentation and as you go through the documentation, you might find issues as you are testing out the documentation and missing documentation is one of the most common issues that you can easily identify. There might also be outdated content, so open source projects maintainers might be working, working on it on their free time, so they might not have had the time to update the content. So you can look for outdated content. Uh, maybe there is a new release that changes things in the documentation. So you might be able to update that. And uh, also translations. So I recently heard a talk about translating Ubuntu to uh, Indonesian languages. So similarly, like you can translate documentation to multiple languages. Uh, for example, one of the most popular language I see documentation getting translated to is Mandarin or uh, at least in simplified Chinese because there are a lot of uh, Chinese speakers, Chinese uh, users who prefer documentation in Mandarin. Right? Maybe that's also true for uh, Indonesia, maybe you might prefer stuff in your native language instead of in English or any other language. And if you are an English expert, maybe you can uh, identify grammatical issues. This makes the content much more easy to read and much more uh, useful. And not only this, you can look for more issues in the documentation, like any issue that you find in documentation is a good, is a good bug for the project. So maybe like you, can, you can think of these contributions as very highly impactful contributions. So we talked about being a user, we talked about reading the contributor guide, we talked about learning the tools, we talked about looking for open issues or looking, identifying issues in the documentation and the final step is to just go ahead and contribute. So how do you contribute? Let's look at some examples. So this is the getting started guide of Apache API 6. A couple of years back I was looking through API 6. I was trying to get API 6 working. I was trying to test out API 6 and I stumbled across the getting started guide. So as I was going through this getting started guide, I found some issues. So the getting started guide for me was not as good as I expected. So what did I do? I opened an issue. Uh, so I went to the API 6 GitHub repository and I opened a documentation issue and I mentioned that the, there are some issues with the getting started guide, it is not 
uh, it is not working as, as I expected, it is not structured as I expected and I also proposed a solution as well. So writing good uh, issues, opening good issues is also key when you are contributing to open source. You can just, like a, a, a worse example for this is just writing the getting started guide is bad. Instead of doing that one sentence uh, bug report, I chose to detail down what the issue is and I also proposed a solution because I was open to contributing to the project. So I made some suggestions on changing the uh, getting started guide, uh, adding some links to make it more readable to the end user. So once I opened the issue, I was I wanted to contribute back to the project. So the next step is to look at the contributor guide. So API 6 has a contributor guide in their website and it, it says how the general flow of contributing to the project. So it mentions uh, which issues to look for, it mentions uh, uh, how you can open issues, how you can start discussions, it also mentions how you can review pull requests, it also mentions how you can open pull requests, uh, it also mentions how the other ways to contribute like improving the website and improving the documentation or writing a blog post which we will look into uh, later. And there is also another documentation style guide for API 6. So think of it, it like uh, a code style for documentation. So this style guide represents how the documentation should be structured, what kind of language should be used, what kind of audience the documentation is intended for, and general, it also mentions some general do's and don'ts. So reading through this, uh, contributor guide is quite important when you are contributing because you can make uh, a contribution that does not follow these guides and the maintainer might reject those contributions uh, immediately. So if you follow these guides, if you follow the guides of the particular project, your contribution has more chance of getting accepted. And then I looked into the issues. So most open source projects, if they are posted on GitHub, uh, they usually have labels on their issues. So uh, as a documentation contributor, as a technical writer, or as someone who is interested in contributing to documentation, you can look for issues marked documentation. In this example, it is doc. So different projects use different tags. So you can just filter uh, open issues based on the documentation tag and you can see a list of open issues and if you have not identified issues yourself you can look for look for issues look for open issues and contribute uh, and try to fix these issues so this is the open issues tab for apache api 6 uh, as you can see that there is a there are a lot of open issues maybe some of you might want to contribute to it and will help us sort this out but yeah uh, and then finally, like once you once you go through the contribution there, once you identify what, what issue needs to be fixed, uh, you can open a pull request. So in the pull request, I also make sure to mention what the pull request does. It's a small uh, pull request, uh, a relatively small pull request that adds documentation for uh, how to use environment variables in, in a configuration file. So as you can imagine, uh, previously uh, we didn't document how people can use environment variables in configuration files, but it was a feature that we supported, but there was no documentation for it. So people were not using it. So that doesn't make sense, like you added a new feature, but people are not using it because people don't know how to use it. And that's where documentation comes and that's where documentation is quite important. And pull requests like these can really help the project. So yeah, uh, so I mentioned what the pull request does and mm, the reviewers accept my pull request and it is merged. Uh, and actually uh, working in documentation helped me land, land my current job. 
So, a couple of, I mean, like months ago, last year, uh, one of the maintainers of the Apache API project reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to work on API 6 documentation uh, in full time. Because I was contributing to the project, I was contributing to the documentation, I was improving the documentation of the project. And the and the project they they understood the value of improving documentation and they offered me a job. So that's pretty cool. So if you are thinking about a career switch, maybe this path might also work for you, contributing to an open source project and they realize how valuable your contributions are and they hire you. So it, it also works if you if you want to be a technical writer or if you want to contribute to documentation. Uh, coming to a more closer example, uh, so I come from India and in our state of Kerala, all of our schools use Ubuntu and we have a special, uh, a special distribution of Ubuntu called ITL school, it's called uh, Kite. So the entire project, uh, it, it's, a, it's a version of Ubuntu that is built on top of the Ubuntu stable release and it adds our custom, our, our language to Ubuntu. So more students, more children have access to computing in their native language. So this has been a pretty successful project. I think it has been going around for like the past 15, 20 years maybe and it is quite successful. Uh, and the point I want to uh, bring here was uh, like ch ma making changes to the product project itself, like uh, fixing things within the project uh, can also be considered as documentation changes. So essentially what this project does is it documents Ubuntu to be used by uh, Malayalam speakers, which is our native language. So students who, are, who just know that language can access the features of Ubuntu and can access uh, Ubuntu in their uh, daily daily school life. Alright, uh, and to segue from that, like talking about documentation that is not really thought of as documentation, like the Ubuntu example where documentation was within the project itself, it is not a separate documentation. Let's look at uh, how we can go beyond documentation, go beyond the documentation website and make more impactful contributions. So documentation in code is another example. Uh, this means uh, you can improve the documentation by improving error messages, you can maybe improve the user experience, maybe the website, maybe the project website is has a bad description maybe, uh, maybe there is a missing help text, if you maybe let's let's say if you hover around a button it doesn't display a help text, help text, maybe you can add that, so doing all of that also is a great way to contribute to documentation. Uh, and this is a recent pull request I made, it was made three weeks ago, so this is a command line tool that we are building. It is completely open source and uh, I made a pull request to change the, the messages that is shown to the user. So when a user uses our CLI, uh, it, it gives them better messages so that they can use the CLI much better. And this is also an impa impactful way to contribute to documentation and uh, the reviewers also think so, so that they find it really valuable and uh, yeah, you can also make such contributions. And the other part is writing blog posts. So I, I think, I firmly believe that everyone can write. So if you are a developer, if you are working on some stuff, if you are trying out a new project, write about it. Uh, even if you are not a great writer, you can just write about it. And whatever experience you have with the project is quite will be quite helpful to other readers. Maybe you run across a problem that only you might be facing and if you document that problem or if you document something that you are trying to do, it is quite, it, it would be quite useful for someone who is doing a Google search like a couple of months later. So 
if you are uh, working with an open source project, maybe like if you are working with uh, Ubuntu, let's say, maybe you can take a user through a new feature of Ubuntu. Maybe you can take the user through a new feature of API 6. Uh, and writing blog posts is also quite impactful. So I, I have a personal blog, uh, and yeah, uh, and while while I was contributing to API 6, I wrote wrote a lot about how people can, wrote a lot of blog posts about how people can use API 6 and there are a lot of articles. So even if you don't have a personal blog, maybe you can post like blog posts in your company blog. Maybe you can use some platform like dev.2, hashnode or any other, uh, any other platforms uh, and create your own blog and uh, write about what you're doing. And yeah, this is also quite impactful and when people search for uh, search for this stuff on Google, like your blog post might show up and they act as documentation for the user. And finally, uh, documenting processes is also important. So when you are contributing to a project, if you, if you, if you don't find a contributor guide, maybe you can write one. So if there is something missing within the project, uh, going in there and filling that gap can be quite impactful. So documenting process uh, like contributor guide is also quite useful. And I go back to this example. So we had some level of contributor guide in the Apache basis project. But uh, after I joined, I, I tried to make this a bit more useful for new contributors. So we also have like a how to contribute section. We have a how to submit an issue session. Uh, we also have how people can report security vulnerabilities, we have project management structures, we have all of these documents that is for new contributors. So they can look through this documentation and make their lives easier. So, so this is basically an idea of paying it forward. So when you first encountered the project, you found it really difficult to get started because there were no documentation. And now you are writing those documentation to help other people, the people who are joining after you, uh, not face those issues. And finally, like uh, answering questions on public forums. This is not at all seen as documentation, but this is also an effective way to contribute. So uh, wiki pages, message boards, or anything that is discoverable. So Ubuntu might have a lot of Ubuntu community might have a lot of forums. I think like you have the Stack Extremes, uh, mailing lists, and all, all sorts of other things. But uh, answering questions there is a way to document uh, way to document stuff. So when you when you when you are googling uh, an issue, maybe your answer to in that forum can show up as a, show up as a solution to some to someone. So. Doing that is also quite helpful for uh, for the project documentation and uh, hanging out in these message boards in these wiki pages is also quite impactful and more often people don't realize that people don't realize the importance of that so so having someone who manages all this is quite important as well yeah uh, so uh, this is what I was talking about like there there are community help wikis for uh, Ubuntu, there is a stack exchange for Ubuntu, so uh, being active and being involved in all of these is a good way to contribute to documentation. Uh, yeah, and this is the stack exchange for uh, Ubuntu, and uh, yeah, like there are a lot of questions. People still actively ask questions in there, uh, people still. Uh, ask questions there, people still answer questions there, so if people are asking, asking questions, it means that they find this platform quite useful and there are a lot of people who answer that and those people are really helping helping others. And a uh, key takeaway from this is that uh, documentation is an engineering practice and this is not something I said, uh, this is from the uh, Canonical website. So. I found Canonical to have uh, good documentation about 
how to document stuff how to how to practice documentation in a company so if you have anything if you want to take away one thing from this talk it is that documentation is an engineering practice and as engineers we should embrace documentation we don't we should not see it as uh, an additional step in the engineering process but it, it, it itself is an engineering process and finally like after this talk maybe you want to contribute to documentation so how can you contribute to documentation you can contribute to apache api 6 this is the project we are working on so you can check out the website and you can contribute to documentation or you can contribute to contribute code if you want and there are also programs like google season of docs which is a program by google which encourages technical writers to contribute to open source projects and google basically pays you so you, you basically get paid to work as a technical writer so probably if you are a student if you are a new developer uh, who is trying to get into technical writing who has some experience in technical writing uh, maybe these programs can help you get started in your career as a technical writer as someone who writes a lot of documentation and we will be trying to participate in this next year so maybe like if you are interested you can also check this this program out and finally uh, if you have some questions feel free to ask now or if you scan this qr code uh, you will find a blog post that basically sums up everything i said just now so maybe you can read it later so feel free to ask questions and check it out thank you Yeah, please go. Okay, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of time. We have a lot of time. So, Joe, my name is Kamba. I want to ask about the technical writing process. Yeah. Uh, I think this is more into technical writing. It seems like uh, I'm currently in uh, the Java project. Yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to learn Java. Yeah. And uh, it's a bit difficult because it's a bit of a big topic. And I'm trying to learn more documentation and technical writing. And since uh, contributing to the open source documentation, it also involves like, technical writing skills. So, Uh, my question is like, uh, based on your experience on being a technical writer, uh, is there any like, uh, you know, like TLDR? So into like TLDR is creating a more concise documentation of a software, uh, other than uh, what it, what is listed on the contribution guide. Right? Because like, uh, I tried to create some blog before of, uh, using software and try to like uh, write a technical documentation of my company and. Uh, basically, when I read it again, I feel like I'm uh, like sucked. Oh, basically, yeah. So, like, uh, if you have any like uh, TLDR or any tips and tricks, so yeah, to, like share with you more uh, more technical technical stuff and more information, uh, it will really be helpful. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good question. So, to sum it up, uh, he worked as at a company and he tried writing technical documentation, but he feels. His documentation may 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 be sometimes suck. Yeah. So, yeah, how can we improve it? So, so first point, like if there is no documentation and you created some documentation, something is always better than nothing. So it is better to have something documented than have it not documented. So anyway, like the contribution you make, even if you don't think it is good, is actually helpful. because you have documentation you have documented something and for blog post i think uh, it can be much it can, it can be a lot personal so when i write a uh, blog post about api 6 uh, i talk about api 6 in from my view so you have you might have a different view and you might have different ideas so writing about it uh, on your own is always uh, helpful because you give a different perspective and uh, finally like uh, like as it like everything else like coding like uh, like engineering like system design everything takes practice so after a while like uh, once you s once you start to understand the problems with how you document things you will be gradually be able to improve this improve it and like gradually iterate and make it a better documentation so i think that is what i uh, So do you like just uh, keep 
keep iterating over it, keep improving it. Like there is, the documentation can never be complete. You have to keep improving it, otherwise it will, it will be outdated. So yeah, uh, keep at it and it will, it will gradually be improved. So it's better off like uh, how much out of flight can you be the information? Sorry? How many hours can you do Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and right now like you, you think your document, the way your document is not good. That's it. That itself is a good realization because you you think that there there are flaws in the in your documentation, and now you have to identify identify those flaws and then work on it and then improve it. Yeah. Okay, so next question. Okay. Uh, so you're part of the Samarinda project, the Samarinda implementation. Uh, should we start from one part uh, process to make recommendation and we should know all of the business process from this project to start uh, the recommendation? Uh, that's a very good question. So you don't have to know the entire project. So when I start, first started fixing issues in API 6, I only know about deploying API 6 in Docker, just running some basic tests, that's it. I didn't know anything else, I didn't know how it was built, I didn't know the underneath the code under, under the hood of API 6, but still I opened issues because uh, when you first start contributing to a project, when you are first uh, involved in a project, you are a new user, so you have a different view of the project than anybody else. So if you have worked in a project for let's say two years, even if something is not documented, people will be able to use it because you are so familiar with the project and you are so close to the project that you fail to see the issues in the project. So as someone new who is contributing to the project, you can make a lot of impact by like uh, pointing out issues because the, the idea of a project is to get uh, new people using the project, new people contribute to the project. So if you are a new user and if you are finding issues in the documentation, it means the documentation has issues. So definitely like start contributing from the beginning itself. Okay. Thank you. And someone, one more question, someone in the back. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, I have one question. I have a project uh, that needs documentation that is someone who wants to to write the documentation, but he has no understanding of my project, such uh, technical matters, and only his, uh, what's all I need? So, uh, someone wants to contribute to your project, but he knows writing, but he doesn't know your project. Yeah, so uh, that's what I me meant about uh, documentation is not easy. People think that if you have IT skills, they can just write documentation for anything, but that is not true. You need to have technical skills as well. You need to have a good understanding of the project. You need to uh, you need to put yourself in the shoes of a user. You need to use the project. You need to test the project completely. That you need to be able to figure out everything. And uh, only then that you should you be able to write the complete documentation because. If you don't understand how something works, you won't be able to tell people how to use it, right? So, I would advise uh, the new contributor to first uh, test out the project, first be a user, first do all of that, and then think about what to do. Um, any other questions? Um, feel free to ask me anything about like contributing to open source in general as well, if you have questions. Oh, okay. no yeah. Uh, what is the this in the public to open source? Sorry? What's uh, how many attendees if we open source? Ah, I'm Okay. On open source. Okay. For our communication. Okay. So, uh, so I, I come from India, so we don't have a, a lot of opportunities as, let's say, someone living in Silicon Valley, maybe in California. I guess it is similar in Indonesia as well. Like we have we have a big tech community, but maybe like we don't get the best offers, we don't get the best stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
So contributing to open source uh, in any way, like contributing in documentation, contributing in code, uh, being part of the community, uh, just like this, like we are all part of the same community and like we are coming each other, we are meeting each other, we are networking, we are doing all sorts of stuff. So I guess it gives you access to a lot of opportunities uh, and uh, a lot of people coming from similar backgrounds like us with less opportunities, they also find it uh, quite helpful in getting them more opportunities. So that's the first thing. Uh, so you can get um, jobs, you can probably get uh, internships. If you are a student uh, who is competing with uh, 500 other students in your college placements maybe, uh, having a background in open source, having an experience as an open source contributor can give you that uh, a green check mark in your resume, so that is quite helpful. And the second thing is like you, you are part of uh, something that is uh, bigger than yourself. So if you are if you are contributing to Ubuntu, like you are contributing to a project that is being used uh, arguably by millions and billions of people, uh, millions of computers everywhere. That is helping billions of uh, requests every day. So similar, similar to that in API6, uh, a lot of top companies use API6, for example, like um, uh, NASA, the space agency in the US, they use API6. So seeing something you are helping build being used for such applications is quite impactful. So that is another advantage. And then I get to work with people all around the world. I get to sit at home and work on a project but I am working with people who are on the opposite side of the globe from me, so that is a really nice feeling. You are, you are, you are part of something that is much bigger than yourself. So yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much it. And like programs like Google Summer of Docs, they help people uh, take advantage of contributing to documentation. They make their uh, people can start uh, contributing to documentation through such programs and. Uh, make it a career probably, and so yeah, that's that's what that's what, that's what, that's what I would say. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, uh, or else we can wind this up. Oh sure. Um, for example, I want to be able to perform from Apache or something like that. And the official computer, but I want to be able to some. How do you convince the people that oh, my way is really good? How do they get really ask that oh, my way is uh, maybe it's easy to uh, to the people that know? No. How to convince? How to make that out? Is this a good uh, way that I have? Okay. So initially it will be quite hard. So the basic question was how to how to join a project and make and convince the existing project maintainers that your contributions are good. So initially it will be really hard because open source projects revolve around trust. You have to build that trust first. And for that you need to start contributing and keep contributing. So initially people might tell you to make changes. Okay, this code is not good or like this documentation change is not what we expected. People might say something like that at the beginning, but once you uh, once you go through the process multiple times, people will start trusting you. You you may get promoted to an official contributor, and you can then uh, and you you'll be in the trust trust circle of other project maintainers. So with time, people will start trusting you with contributions with multiple contributions people will start trusting you and then you can go from there. Alright. All good? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Five minute break then. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Thanks again and yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.